together again for our fifth and final weekly choral video. So during this week, we're learning about user-defined functions. And so we're going to incorporate a user-defined function into the program that we've been pretty much using the whole time. So with that in mind, the requirements are to create a program that asks the user for how many numbers to add. It uses a for loop to collect the numbers and accumulate the total. Then it displays the total of the numbers is and the number. But our requirement is to use a user-defined function, spelled incorrectly, to gather the numbers and collect the total. So that means that basically the for loop part of our program will be in the user-defined function. Okay. So let's, um, if we were to go back to week three, and we were to take the program there minus the if statements at the end, let's copy those in here and start with this. So this isn't necessary. This is really what our program was, okay? Now, if we're to create a function, now let's first just up here at the top, we're gonna to create a function. We're gonna use the word function to begin with, function. And so within the function, we give the function itself a name. Let's call it calc total. And then in parentheses here, we're gonna we're going to define any parameters. That means values that come into the function. And then the return parameter, which is a value that comes out of the function. So if we're calculating the total, we're going to have to pass into the function a parameter of how many numbers to add. When the function is complete, we want it to give us back the total of the numbers that have been collected. So we say returns an integer, and we give it a name, total. And here inside, inside the parentheses, we have to tell it the type, and I'm gonna call this one numbers. So it's really how many numbers, but I don't wanna use the same, and we could, I guess, we could do that. Um, how many, we could call it how many numbers here, okay? Now, inside of our function, we're basically doing the same thing that we would inside a loop or anywhere else, we're going to space these things out. OK. Now, we're going to need, in addition to any time that you create a user-defined function, you have to also create a main function. Otherwise, the program just uh, implicitly uses a main function. You just don't have to do anything with it. And this is what our typical main function looks like. Function main returns nothing. It doesn't have to take a parameter. It returns nothing. Okay. And right now I just have the output in here. But this part of it, to ask how many numbers to add, we're going to put that in our main function. We'll clean it up here in a minute. That means this, how many numbers, needs to move from this function down to our main function. So with all that in mind, then, this function is going to take in a parameter called how many numbers. We're going to use that variable to collect the numbers. And then when we're done, it's going to take whatever the last, by the way, these need to be accumulated like this or indented like this. When it's done here, it's going to take the value of total Notice it says total, and it's going to return that value back to the main. So really the thing that we don't have in here yet is getting the value from the function. So I'm going to create a variable called total. Now, when we create variables in Coral, these variables are called local variables. That means that within a function, if I create a variable, it's not available to any other function. So that's why we can call these things the same. And then we're going to ask the user for the number. Now here is where we need to 
we're going to say total equals calc total. That's the name of our function. In parentheses, we're going to pass it how many numbers that will use that value that comes into this spot right here. Now, the fact that these two are called the same thing is just our choice. And the fact that total is the same in here as it is in here is just our choice. It doesn't have to be that way. And then total is used to display this line. OK, so basically, we've just kind of pieced and parsed stuff around to put it in this function. We've got that calculates the total. And then here's our main. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to look at the definition of this one, but it's not going to do anything. It's not going to execute it. It's going to execute the main function. And the only time it's going to execute our user defined function is when it gets right here. Then it will execute it, and it will return the value of total, and it will display it. All right, so let's check our syntax. OK. Integer. Oh, I see. Yep, yep, yep. So I don't have to declare the variable total in here, because it's actually declared right here. OK, so that's the reason for that. All right, let's try it again. Well, look at that. We passed the syntax now. Let's step through it. So it's starting down here in our main, asking for the how many. Now it's going through calc total, going through the for loop just like it did before. When it's done with that for loop, one more time. OK, a few more times. Wasn't counting. There. It drop back down here. The value of total then is displayed. So if we look at our output, you know what? It's exactly the same output as the last time. The only difference is, is that we've put it in this user defined function. The user defined function can't seem to get to the top here. Well, that's because I have to exit out of that. Okay, so the user defined function just makes our main a little cleaner. It doesn't have so much stuff in it. We've kind of modularized or componentized these different pieces. And for that matter, I could use that calc total anywhere in my program or multiple times in my program. That's really the advantage of modularizing using these user-defined functions. So I hope you've been able to follow me as we broke this thing out into some functions. And I hope you have a great week.